Field work and inquiry. Geographers ask questions about the world around us and we do it to try to improve quality of life of people on the planet or to discover more about the worlds that we live in. So here is a picture, a geographer might think immediately, is this a safe place to live? Might there be landslides in this area? Could we prevent those landslides? And is there a way we can predict the landslides and warn the people in time? Here is another picture, a geographer might think, is this rainforest destruction necessary? Are there negative effects of it? What can be done about it? Now, geographical questions can be answered through doing an inquiry. An inquiry is like an investigation, and it's a bit like being a detective. You ask a question, you go out and collect and present your evidence, and then you try to finally work out an answer to the question. Field work is the part of the inquiry where you actually go out into the natural environment and collect the information. It's leaving the classroom or office or laboratory and it's being within the world collecting the information that you want to find out. Now, when geographers do an inquiry, there are different parts to it. We ask the question, we go out and we collect evidence. It's normally called a methods section. We present our evidence as graphs and maps and diagrams and photos. And then you do the writing bit. You write about that evidence that you've collected and try to answer the question. We draw conclusions, which is a summary of what we found out. And then we might do an evaluation section where we say what went well and how we could improve it. Now, the fieldwork part of all of this is that stage two. It's the collecting evidence bit. The rest of this video goes through each part of the inquiry process. You can see the timings below so it's easy to skip to a section that interests you. The first section of our inquiry is about the questions that you might ask. Normally people put the question as the title of their inquiry. So here it is, how sustainable is the Library of Birmingham? It's a question and a title. Often people split the key question into aims. Um, so aim one, to investigate whether the Library of Birmingham is socially sustainable. Or aim two, to investigate whether the Library of Birmingham is economically sustainable. Alternatively, um, people split the question into a number of hypotheses. Hypotheses being ideas that have not yet been proved. So with our example, hypothesis one, the Library of Birmingham is socially sustainable. You'd go away and during your field work, you'd be able to prove whether it is or it isn't. Hypothesis two, the Library of Birmingham is not economically sustainable. Now, the best hypotheses that you could write contain a bit of explanation of why they were chosen and might include a bit of theory. So the Library of Birmingham is not economically sustainable. I think this because a certain website says the library costs £189 million and it's unlikely this money can be paid back through a shop, cafe and hiring out of rooms. So normally with the hypotheses, you've done some internet research, you've done some background reading, you've come up with something that then you're going to go and test when you do your field work. Here's an example exam question. So for a physical geography field work investigation, which you've completed, explain why your key question for investigation was appropriate. Now, they have been studying um, whether erosion is occurring along the North Norfolk coast. They're saying it's appropriate because it's close to their school. That makes sense, they can do it within one day. And it links the topic of coastal management. That makes sense, they've got the theory about this topic because they've learned about it as part of the syllabus. That's why that is worth two marks. So in summary, they've identified what the investigation is and they've stated two reasons why it's appropriate. Now, if they're not asking about your own field work and they're giving you an example of field work and asking you to write about it, do the same. Is the question appropriate? Does it fit in with the fact that they could get there and back in one day? Is it something they've learned about? Um, can you get good hypotheses and conclusions from what they're learning about? That sort of thing. Collecting evidence, the methods section. 
Now, in the methods section, you just write what you did to be able to answer your key question. Did you do a traffic count? Did you do a questionnaire? Um, write whether you collected primary data, that's stuff that you collected yourself, or did you do um, your investigation with secondary data? Um, that's where you're using someone else's information. Usually the secondary data is all of your internet research. Um, it's great, there's no problems with it. You're using information someone else has provided. It should be very detailed. So someone else could do the same method. They could copy exactly what you have done and explain how each method will help you answer your key question. That shows the reader, reader of the project how it's relevant. Now here is a very good method as an example. Um, they've told us what they did. They did a traffic count, but then they've added the detail. They've said they stood on different roads. They've said they recorded it using a tally. They've said they had a prepared recording sheet. Um, they've also linked it into their aim. They've said they're doing it so they can see whether traffic congestion is a problem in Telford. Now, what they've done, the detail, explaining why they've done it, that makes a good method. Here are some examples of different methods that might be used. Um, these are primary data methods. So these are ones where you go out and get your own information. You might visit a river and do a survey. You might go and do a pedestrian count or a traffic count. You might observe or take photos or do interviews or questionnaires. Secondary data, you might use information you can get from the internet or elsewhere, such as census data or crime statistics or satellite images or Google Earth. Um, you might record using quantitative data, that's precise numbers and amounts, or qualitative data, that's where you're recording your opinions or your attitude. Do you feel there's a lot of crime in an area? Do you feel it's polluted or congested? Um, so numbers not involved, feelings. Here we're going to look at one human um, method, human geography method to collect information and one physical geography method. Now we're looking at questionnaires and interviews for our human geography method. Um, I've gone into it in quite a lot of detail here in case you're asked about it. So a questionnaire is a list of questions answered on paper or online form, whilst an interview involves questions asked face to face. Questionnaires usually ask closed questions, which questions ask that result in answers that are limited to single words. And this is done for speed. Um, so it could be something like, do you feel safe in a high street at 11 p.m.? And the person who's being asked rings yes, no, or don't know. It gives the researcher a lot of data quickly that can easily be processed. We can easily turn it into graphs. And um, the only problems are it can be quite time consuming, it can be expensive, and sometimes you can get quite a small sample size if people don't want to answer them. Interviews involve a discussion with one person where you ask them open questions. So it can be something like, what's your opinion on the safety of the high street at night? Um, so they can give any response they want. Um, they gather more in-depth information, um, but due to the length of the interview can take only a few, can be completed at a time. Now we'll look at a physical geography technique, which is river channel surveys. With a river channel survey, you're measuring what the river, river channel is like at certain places going down the river's course. You might measure the width or depth or speed of water or the gradient of the valley sides. And if you do this, you can see how the river changes as it goes downstream. Um, human error can be a problem with this, um, especially if you can't trust other members of your group to do things accurately. The weather can be a problem. Um, so here are some examples. Warm weather will mean there's less water in the river and that would mean a slower flow. Here are a few past exam questions to do with the methods section. Here's a first one. Justify one technique you use to collect your data and for a human geography field, fieldwork investigation. Justify means say why you used the technique. So here's an example. Questionnaires is the technique why 
because it gave me a broad range of opinions and could be done in a short amount of time on our field trip. Perfect. Next, name a primary data collection technique suitable for carrying out a human job for fieldwork investigation, looking at the issue of shop closures within an economic hub. You could say questionnaire, you could say survey, you could say interview. Next, a class wants to find out about the popularity of supermarket fairly trade goods. Name one primary data collection technique they could use to do this. Again, questionnaire, survey, or interview, put one of them. Suggest one limitation of collecting primary data using this method. Well, closed questions can provide narrow responses, or you could say a small sample size may not be representative. Or you might say something like you'd have to visit on different days at different times to make it accurate, etc. For a physical geography fieldwork investigation which you have completed, evaluate one technique you used to collect data. Evaluate means what is the value of it, so what's good and what's bad about the technique that you used. So here's an example. Um, we timed how long it took a ping pong ball to travel 10 metres down the river to measure river speed. And that's great because you've totally put the examiner in the picture of what your physical geography fieldwork investigation was. Now the good and bad bit. It was useful to help answer our question how do rivers change along their course, but our ping pong ball kept getting stuck so it wasn't that accurate. Perfect. Now if in the exam question they're not asking about your fieldwork, they're giving you an example of field work instead, you could use similar things as answers. Here's a human geography field work example. So here is the photo, this is our resource, and we must use the photo if it says study figure six. State two ways this photograph could be used in a human geography investigation. How about to demonstrate the issue to be investigated? One mark. How about to demonstrate with annotation traffic problems? Again, one mark. Now it has to be something that can be seen within the photo. You can't put air pollution because you can't see it. Yes, it might slightly indicate it, but you can't see it. Um, so with photos, just say things that can be seen. Here's a larger question. You will have carried out some physical geography fieldwork, or it might say, look at this example of physical geography fieldwork. Name the fieldwork. Well, how about to investigate how the channel of the river team changes as it goes downstream. You're telling the examiner exactly what was done. And then to what extent was your primary data collection successful? Now with this question, you need to say what went well, what didn't go so well, and how it could be improved for next time. So here is a good um, developed answer. To a, larger extent, to a large extent, our data collection methods were successful. We measured the velocity of the river at different locations along the river's course. We did this five times to come in at each location, which increased the accuracy of the results. This was important to produce more secure analysis and conclusions. This is great. It's saying what went well, and it's also saying how the data that you collected is impacting on your results and conclusions. Next bit, however, a limitation is that at times the float used to measure velocity got caught in the stones in the riverbed. This meant that human intervention was required and would have affected the final mean result. This is great again, this is saying what didn't go so well. So to summarise, write what went well, write what didn't go well, develop your, your ideas and overall write whether the collection was successful or not. Processing and presenting the evidence. Processing is what you do with your numbers and information you've collected to be able to use them. So it might just be totaling up everyone's questionnaire results to find the group results. Or you might just take all the photos you've taken and put them into categories to make it easier for you to use them. Presenting the information uh, means turning numbers into maps, graphs, diagrams to make it easy for people to understand. I want to focus on each in turn just to show you what is good. So if you're locating your study area, don't just shove in a map like that. It is useless because to many people who don't live in that area, they won't be able to picture where it is in the country. Far, far better if you put in a map 
of the country so people think oh yes it's that part of the country then zoom in on the part that you're interested in and the same occurs for writing about um, where something is start with locating within the country then zoom in and describe where it is in its region and then finally you can go into talking about where it is precisely within a local area if we're talking about graphs there are hundreds of different types of graphs that you can do but for the sake of the GCC exam I would just stick with bar chart line chart pie chart the main types so here is a bar chart showing nicest fruits here's a line chart um, showing change in people in a store over time and here's a pie chart showing people's favorite pets bar charts we use to compare um, things between different groups so these are groups of people um, liking different fruits they can show changes over time but best when the changes are larger line graphs show changes in something over time it is continuous data every single point on this line has to mean something and so um, perfect finally we have pie charts and pie charts compare um, different parts of a whole they don't show changes over time um, so we're here we have everybody's pets and then we're breaking it down into sections of people that have certain pets so a little summary for um, charts and graphs make sure they've got a title make sure you've included your axis labels and include color to make it clearer for people to understand Finally, we've got photos and diagrams. Don't just bung a photo in without labeling it to show people what you're trying to tell them, um, titling it so that people can see what the photo is about and writing about the photo so that people can see its relevance. So figure one shows traffic congestion and lorries in Ludlow Town Centre. The lorries are causing vibration damage etc etc we've made that photo or diagram relevant title it add labels annotations mention it in your writing now let's have a look at some exam questions to do with presentation um, here the candidate has to draw a horizontal bar graph to show the width measurement results for the two sites so go through the resource find width results and you've got to do site 192 site 2 115 centimeters notice it says a horizontal bar graph so what we do is we just turn our bars sideways there is site 1 going exactly up to 92 here is site 2 going exactly up to 115 You've written your units, you've labelled your axis full marks. Here's another one for human geography field work investigation that justify one technique of data presentation. So you'd have to pick your pie chart or bar chart or whatever you've done and say why it's suitable. Justify is saying why. So I did a, bar, a pie chart. A pie chart clearly shows through different sizes of wedges which forms of trans transport were the most used and it's appropriate for discrete data allowing easy comparison so we focus there on how the pie chart is suitable to show the information name the technique write two valid ideas demonstrating why it's suitable full marks um, here's another question as part of the secondary data collection, students obtain data about sales of fairly traded products. Complete the graph below by plotting the data for coffee sales. So we can see they've done a bar chart for bananas, a bar chart for sugar, a bar chart for cocoa. We've just got, just got to put in the coffee 15. Um, so there it is. Uh, the ruling is bar must be of similar width. To the existing bars i'd also try and shade it a similar color next question make two observations about the data on the graph now here is our graph showing fair trade growth in sales you can see the bars are getting larger so here are two observations 
sales of fair trade products have increased over the years? Yes. The fastest growth rate was between 2006 and 2008. Yes. So the analysis section. Analysis is where you use the evidence you've collected to answer your key question or aims or hypotheses. And um, generally we describe what is shown by the results, graphs, photos, maps we've got. And then you try and say why you've got these results. Do they fit in with the hypotheses? If not, why not? Do they agree with geographical theory? And you link evidence together. So here's an example. Um, here's our graph of nicest fruit. Let's see what we've done here. My graph of nicest fruit shows that the largest category was blueberry with 40 votes. Now that's just description, but I've used precise numbers, which is great. This questionnaire results just hypothesis one was correct. So I've linked my graph to the hypothesis to show its relevance. It's backed up by the interview question where 80% of people use the word yummy to describe bl blueberry. So many, so many people like blueberry because. So I've done another two things here. To start with, I've linked this graph to um, an interview question. And then I'm starting to explain here. So many people liked blueberry because as well. So I've described, I've been precise, um, I've explained and I've managed to link my data together. Here's an exam question. Um, so what does it say? A student has used GIS to present their findings on changes in beach sediment size. Suggest what figure four indicates about the pattern of beach sediment size along the shore. Now, when you see a diagram like this, just go to the key. So it says mean sediment size. So the largest sediment size is the largest circle. The smallest is the smallest circle. So all we've got to do is just suggest two things. So largest mean sediment size is to the south or southwest of the shoreline. Yep, yeah, true. And here's the smaller stuff. Only the two sites further south have a mean sediment size above 2.5. Again, true. Here's the largest bits of sediment size. Now the rules here are, write two valid points or one developed. Don't use up, down or top, bottom. Always use compass directions, north, south, east, um, north, east, south or west. And talk about the key in your answer. Here's another question. State one way you could improve uh, this diagram to make it more informative. Well, you could insert a scale. You could add a title. You could add a location or show the direction of longshore drift, just anything to improve it. Here's another exam question. Using data from this table, describe the pattern in the longshore drift data collected. Now, because it says using data from the table, mention these numbers. Describe pattern. What can you see within the data? So there's a greater drop on the south side than the north side. All these numbers are higher than these numbers, ranging from 14 to 22 centimetres. Yes. Therefore, it can be deduced that longshore drift is moving sand south. Good. And that would be a very well developed points. So what do you do? Mention patterns, things you can see from the numbers. Quote precise facts or numbers. You might say what the largest or smallest is. Communicate your answer in a logical order to get full marks. Drawing evidence to conclusions. A conclusion is a summary of what you've found out. You answer the original question using evidence from throughout your inquiry. So the sort of thing you might write is, I've proved that aim one is correct. My questionnaire results showed me that. Furthermore, my photos also proved that. This was also backed up by my traffic count, which showed that. So we're drawing on evidence from throughout the project um, in order to answer our original aim or question or hypotheses. Then you'd mention how your findings fit into the wider geographical wor world and how they could be useful for other people and further investigations. Here is a past exam question. You're provided with these resources and then it says, write a conclusion to this hypothesis. Here is a very well developed answer. Um, if you want to pause the video, you can in order to read it. But what they've put in there is precise figures 
they've, pre they've put precise facts and numbers from these diagrams. You want to say figure 7a shows and pick some of these numbers, figure 7b shows and work out uh, the population compared to the year on this graph, etc. They haven't just written points again, the ideas are really well developed. Here's another exam question. Um, here are resources um, that were provided. Here's the exam question saying, write a conclusion to the question for investigation. Does the process of longshore drift occur at Sheringham? Develop your answer. Again, here is a superb answer, very, very well developed. Again, if you want to pause the video and have, take a look through that. But what have they done? They've mentioned the precise figures. So figure five shows, figure six shows. Again, they've quoted precise facts and numbers from these figures. And then they haven't just written points. There's very, very well developed ideas in order to get full marks. Finally, another example. To what extent was your fieldwork data useful in helping you to answer your overall question for investigation? Now, most likely in the exam, they'll be asking you about an example that they've come up with, like the previous ones. Um, but again, let's imagine there's our fieldwork title, what impact is tourism having on York? There is a perfect answer that the examiners were really, really happy with. Again, you can pause to have a look at this. But they've stated what data they collected. They've mentioned and developed how it was useful to them in the project. The final section of an inquiry is where you evaluate what went well and what you could improve. So you write what was good, what was bad about your inquiry. Identify any problems you had with the methods and how they could be improved. So for example, our questionnaire was done on one day and at one time, so the results may not be usual or normal. To improve, we'd complete hundreds of questionnaires at different times and on different days of the week. Brilliant. Secondly, say whether any errors in the methods may have affected the results or conclusion. There may be bias in the results because of the way the questionnaire was carried out, which affects the conclusion. For example, the huge number of Welsh visitors may be just one large party visiting on that day. Great. Finally, also say what went well. Having said that, the questionnaire allowed us to quickly get the views of representative sample of people who were there at that time on that day. So with your evaluation, say what was good, say what was bad. Here's an exam question. Um, they've provided us with GCSE River Fieldwork notes here. And it says, suggest how the students could improve the investigation in order to improve the reliability of their results. Now, the thing with this is have a really good, slow, thorough read through it. Try to find any problems that you can see, any ways to improve. And then that's um, how you would um, answer it. So just look here. We held a meter ruler across the top of the banks of the river, measured how wide it was at site one and site two. We estimated the extra width at site two as it was more than one meter wide. So right this side, they were just guessing the width, um, which means it's less uh, reliable and less accurate. Here's a good answer. One problem students has was that the orange got stuck on a rock, giving a much larger reading than on the other, than on the other attempts. The students could have improved their investigation by using a more scientific piece of equipment to measure the speed, such as a flow meter. This would have made the result they collected more precise and have a greater level of accuracy, so the results are more reliable. There's an example of a good one. So, mention any issues that can be seen in the figure, state improvements, and then develop how they would make your results more reliable. One other thing that we could consider is health and safety. And before undertaking field work, we've got to consider everyone's safety on the trip. Um, things you could write about in an exam is transport. How did you get there? Did you have a professional driver? Did everyone wear their seat belts? Communication, did you have mobile phones and did you share phone numbers so that everybody could communicate with each other in case there was a problem? 
Um, clothing, does everybody know to bring waterproofs, boots, walking boots, jumpers, so nobody gets hypothermia? Safety of the environment, are the river levels too high to make it safe? Are the balls in the fields we're planning to walk across? Uh, you could have other things like, have you got a first aid kit? Is there enough first aid equipment for everybody to share, um, etc., to keep everybody safe on your trip? Thank <laughs> you.